Hi everyone and welcome back to Power Electronics Lectures. Today we'll talk about the DC to DC step up converters or the boost converter. Let's study the behavior or the working principle for the boost converter and explain why this kind of converters uh, can achieve higher efficiency compared to other converters like the buck converter, for example. If you look at uh, the boost converter, you will find that the difference between the boost converter and the buck converter. For the buck converter, we have a storage device, which is the inductor connected to a transistor and the uh, input voltage source is connected to the same uh, transistor. And here we have another diode. So this is the configuration for the uh, buck converter. And on the output, we have the resistor, for example, and the capacitor to ensure that we have a voltage source in the output. So here we have two storage devices for the buck converter. Both of these devices are connected to the load side. If you look at the input side, you'll find that we have a hard link, we can say, between the voltage source and the switching device. If you compare this configuration with the boost config configuration, the traditional boost converter, you'll find that here we have a transistor and here we have a diode. So both switching devices here are placed in the middle of the DC to DC converter. On the input, we have have storage device connected to the DC power supply and on the output we have resistor and the capacitor. So here both switches are not linked directly to the voltage source. What is the difference? What is the idea of this? You'll find that if the switch is connected directly to the voltage source, this means we have a discontinuous um, input current. This will uh, decrease the efficiency of the converter. But here we can say that we have soft transition for the energy from the input to the output. So from the input here, the voltage source will first supply the energy storage device, which is the inductor, and this energy will be stored here first. Then after that, it will be transferred to the output. On the output, we already have the filter device here, which is the capacitor. So you'll find that uh, the energy transition inside the boost converter is very smooth and uh, the efficiency will be very high at uh, wide range of uh, operations or wide range of uh, duty cycles, which is not the case in the buck converter or in the buck boost converter, for example. Let's have a look at the operating principle for the boost converter and see how can we find the relation between the output voltage and the input voltage. For the boost converter, we said that uh, for the traditional boost converter, we have a switch here. We can say that this is switch is a, a, an IGBT and here we have a diode, a power diode. When the switch here, Q for example, is on, this means uh, this switch is conducting, is on, and at this time, you'll find that this will be replaced by a short circuit and the current will flow in this direction. So the source will charge the inductor. You'll ask question, the diode already in this direction. Why don't we have current flowing in this direction? Of course, not the case because the current absolutely will flow in this direction because this is an active switch and will move in both directions here and here. In this case, no problems. The circuit is closed, but in this case, you'll find that the current will go in this direction and will face the diode in the opposite side and will make sure that this diode is off. It will be open circuit. So the current will flow only in this direction during the inductor and the uh, active switch. And this is the case when the switch is on. If we try to draw the current inside the inductor, you'll find that the current on the inductor IL is increasing. At this, at this moment, and we assume that we have a linear operation here because the switching frequency is high enough. When the switch is off, so the switch Q will be off, and this will be open circuit, and the current will flow in this direction. This will be open circuit, so all the current or all the energy that's stored inside the inductor will push and open this short circuit, this diode, make it conducting, and the energy will be storing Will be flowing in this direction. So here we have yellow current and the green current, for example. The current in this stage, it will be decreasing. So this will be Ts, the switching time, and this is delta times Ts. Now, of course, here we find that on the input side, we have two currents, the green current while the switch is off and the yellow current while the switch is on. Once we have two currents here, 
or let's say a high current at the input this means the input voltage must be less than the output voltage right if you look at the output here we have only the green current one current and uh, for the input we have two currents so we can say that uh, the input voltage at this point for this boost converter is less than the output voltage and this is the main idea of the of the boost converter which is making the output voltage larger than the input voltage now let's try to find the relation between these two voltages v output over v input as we explained before we must have a balanced operation in the boost converter or any dc to dc converter otherwise the energy will be accumulated inside the energy storage device and we will lose the balance within our converter when the switch is conducting so the voltage across the inductor which is ldi by dt is equal to v input and uh, similarly di l by dt the slope for this current will be equal to how much v input over l so the voltage here the slope here v input over l the same thing will happen when the switch is off when the switch is off the switch will be open circuit the diode will be short circuit and the current will be flowing in this direction the voltage across the inductor LDI by DT will be equal to how much V input minus V output the rate of change of the current with respect to time is equal to V input over V uh, minus V output over L and this is the slope here this will be V input minus V output over L now since we have a balanced operation for this boost converter you'll find that the rate of change of the current here must be equal to minus the rate of change of the current here so if we say that uh, v input over l times delta t s this must be equal to how much minus v input minus v output over l times v time duration from here to here which is 1 minus delta times ts try to simplify this equation you will find that ts will go with ts l will go with l so here we'll end up with v input times delta so delta v input is equal to minus v output we can say that this is plus this is minus so we can say that uh, this is v out minus delta times v out minus v input plus delta v input this will go with this they are same and then finally we can say that delta v out 1 minus delta times v out is equal to v in so v out over v in 1 over 1 minus delta if we say that uh, delta for example is equal to 0.5 uh, the output voltage will be double the input voltage now this is the case for the DC to DC converters, the boost converter. The relation between the input and the output voltage, one over one minus delta, the duty cycle, and this delta will ensure that our converter is operating always as a step up converter. So if you replace this delta with any value between zero and one, so definitely this will give us an output voltage larger than the input voltage. To achieve steady state voltage in the capacitor, the steady state uh, and steady state current in the inductor, uh, the average capacitor current must be zero and the average inductor voltage must also be zero. Otherwise, the capacitor voltage will keep increasing and the inductor current will keep increasing until the waveform loses the control and the inductor or the capacitor will be damaged or unbalanced at least. If we try to find the average current in the inductor, this average current can be determined by the by recognizing that uh, the average input power must be equal to the average output power. So here if we try to find the average input power, the input power must be equal to the output power. We assume here we have no losses, of course. The output power can be found by using the output voltage squared over R. And the input power, since we have a DC voltage on the input, so we can say that uh, the input power is equal to the input voltage times the input current 
i l and here we can say that uh, this is an approximation for the input current because i l is the average current we can say that the input voltage times the average current on the inductor is equal to the output voltage squared over r so and from previous slide we know that v out is equal to how much 1 over 1 minus delta times v input so we can say that v input times i l is equal to v input squared over 1 minus delta squared times r and from this we can say that the average current i l without any ripple is equal to v input over 1 minus delta squared times r this is the average input current on the inductor if we try to find the minimum value for this current which is changing from i l minimum to i l maximum we can say that this is delta i l and the maximum value is i l maximum and here is i l minimum and the average value of course is how much is i l so we can say that i l maximum or minimum is equal to how much the average value which is i l plus or minus delta i l over 2 delta i l from here is equal to how much we know that this slope is equal to v input over l so and the change delta i l is equal to how much because you know that l d i l by dt is equal to this voltage which is v n so delta i l alone must be multiplied by delta t which is delta times t s so delta i l from here is equal to v input over l times delta t s we divide this by 2 and add this value to it we can find the minimum and the maximum values so this again is equal to v input over 1 minus delta squared times r plus or minus for the maximum or the minimum so this will be v input times delta t s over 2 times l and this is the maximum and the minimum inductor current in order to make sure that this converter is operating in the continuous conduction mode we have to make sure that this minimum current is larger than zero so we can easily say that i l minimum which is v input over 1 minus delta squared times r minus v input times delta t s over 2 l we can put the uh, ts here down as switching frequency this value must be larger than zero in order to make sure that this converter is working or operating in the continuous conduction mode and from this equation we can find the value for the inductance and the switching frequency so we can easily say that this v input over 1 minus delta squared times r must be larger than v input times delta over 2 times l times fs this will go with this and this will go here this value will jump here so we can say that l times the switching frequency the minimum value for this must be larger than delta times 1 minus delta squared times r over 2 and this is the minimum value for the combination of the input inductance and the switching frequency to make sure that that our uh, that our converter is working in the continuous conduction mode if you want to find the value for the inductor so you can remove this one from here and put it here so this is the minimum value for the inductance that makes our converter working in the continuous conduction mode i hope that you enjoy this lecture and see you next time